call the meeting to order. Everybody join us with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Trace number four six eight oh one. Four six eight oh one. Yep. people here tonight, a lot of interested people, I'm so glad to see you. Uh, so people are probably called and left a message on the phone or called you and talked to you directly. Um, we've been asking a question, I want the board to be aware of the question, does the community wish to improve our sports complex? And if so, how would they like to improve? That's just a question, there's no bond issue at this point. There is no money spent on architectural fees. There are no official plans. We have Chris Davis with us from PWA. That's our district architect. Um, we attended, or I attended the uh, Chamber of Commerce meeting and talked to some of the chamber. They seemed interested. And then I followed up with TRA, who seems to run around with kids about as much as uh, the teachers do on a regular basis and making all kinds of fun activities that have a wall. Um, and um, at this point, um, we're seeking, I let everyone I talk to know that the board is seeking input. The board would like to hear what the community would like to see and to help us answer that question. And in my mind, the board is not here, the school district is not here, our employees are not here to force any issue, bond issue, tax levy, anything like that on our community. We don't force feed anything, we give information. And the information is simply this. We have the bonding capacity, that's the borrowing capacity, to borrow between two and $2.5 million and have no increase to our tax levy. So right now our tax levy is 401, $1.08 eight of that pays our debt. The schools around the state, and I tried to get the data to get today from our um, area supervisor, and basically that data is, you know, Districts all over the state, and that in 2020, that's the latest one I have, I asked for 21, 22, but I had 2020, 73 school districts were running bond and tax levy increases, 73. And out of that 73, there were eight that could not pass a bond or a levy increase, mostly bonds. Almost all of them looked like there were no tax increase levies. So these are districts that say, hey, we need new roofs. Hey, we'd like to build an ag facility. Hey, we need new HVAC. Hey, we need to upgrade our security. We need to take out this loan, no tax increase, and pay for it. And out of that 73 that ran in 2020, unfortunately, we were in a minority. We were one of the eight school districts that said no. And you need 57.14% of the vote to say yes. So I don't like being in that minority because everything we do, if we borrow money, if we bring money in from a grant, we have 16 active grants right now, we're always chasing money, and we're only chasing it for one reason, for kids, for this community. Every bit of money that gets spent, whether you're spending it on a new teacher, books, library, the superintendent, some people don't know, you actually have to have a superintendent. <coughs> it's in the new Missouri School Improvement Plan guidelines that if you don't have it, you could lose your accreditation. So you have to have a superintendent, you have to have a principal, you have to have counselors, you have to have all these pieces in place 
to be a school. So it's all for kids. Now, some people may say, hey, just maintain what we have and don't do anything different. I can hear that, the board can hear that. Some people may say, we want it to be a little better. We want to get more use out of our facilities. And if you look around, I think it's kind of unfortunate looking at the downtown area. I'm not blaming anybody, but it's crumbling, okay? It's kind of unfortunate looking at the pool across town. It seemed to be a lot of interest in trying to do something about it, but nobody did. And now I'm looking at, you know, what's in our board of education. We look at ourselves as a team and say, what's in our control here? What are we supposed to be good stewards of and make it great for kids? What are we supposed to do? The track's starting to crumble. Football field probably needs a little work. It's starting to get a little flat on the top. If you walk across it, those of you who walk across it, you probably agree some. Kind of feels a little bit like a loonscape underneath there if you kind of walk that a little bit. Uh, I walk across it almost every morning with my dog with the sprinkler going on. So the question is, what do we want that place to look like? Because we have a little bit of bonding capacity, in fact, enough to actually take care of that football field and possibly the track. That's what the community wants. But it's not what Dr. Rob wants. It's not what this Board of Education wants. What does the community want? We don't pass bond issues. We set it up for you guys to be successful and have what you want. So if you're here tonight and have an opinion, I talked to Bob, he said he is a great orator, right in the same genre as Winston Churchill, so we'll just that laying over it. Um, but anyway, at any rate, so Bob, would you care to share a little bit about community perspective about this whole thing? Um, you know, just being involved in the community in many uh, different groups and councils, uh, especially after the TRA meeting, seeing what the you know general proposal would be for possibly a football field and track. Um, you know, with where our school is located, um, right there on the highway, when people want to move into communities, schools, it's top of the list. You know, um, a new football field would be a big boost to our our perspective from out-of-town people and in-town people. Um, from TRA's perspective, um, you know, we a turf field could have a lot of multi-uses. Um, obviously, it's gonna benefit the football team and the track team if, if a track's put in. It would benefit band. You know, they practice over at St. Andrews now uh, because they don't wanna damage the high school field. Um, so they're limited when it rains or if it's muddy. Uh, with a turf field, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, as long as I've lived here, which is my whole life, I've never been able to hold a track meet here. Um, checking with MISHA standards. Um, a six lane track, you can basically hold a full fledged high school track meet. Um, from my understanding, from what I've seen, we could get a six lane track in um, full size without doing any improvements to the stands, to the weight room, anything like that. Um, you know, from just use of the field, um, the track, if, if, if proposed and move forward, um, you could do dust to dawn lighting and we could get a lot of, you know, use from communities. Um, I know there's a lot of other towns that have nice tracks that may have um, it open for people to walk on and use for the community benefit. Softball and baseball in the spring when it's too wet to go on the field, instead of being in the gym, they could be on that using that. So it, it, you know, it would be used by a lot of different um, sports teams, other extracurricular activities. Um, you know, I had a couple people that heard I was coming and brought up the Relay for Life that we used to hold. Every other year of California I haven't hold, held because a lot of it has to do with the track conditions. From what I've heard from the Relay for Life committee, I'm not on that, but this is, this is what I've been told, so possibly getting that back every other year. Um, you know, from my yield here in a second to my colleague on youth football, just so I don't take up all the time talking, but, um, yeah. you know, being a city council member as well, it would be a boost for our, our town. Um, and that's not, that's not an official city council position. That's just me and my opinion. But, um, from what I understand, if, if, if this does come to a vote and it does pass for, by the community, we would still have some bonding capability for emergency things that would come up so we wouldn't be you know tying ourselves to where we couldn't do something in the future if we had to um i think from 
90% of the people I've talked to, they would like to at least see it come up for a vote and let the community decide. If it's something we want to improve on, great. If it's not, at least the community has their say. Um, Garrett, you want to speak on the youth yeah, football perspective? Yeah, thank you, Carl. <laughs> uh, yeah, just from a youth uh, football standpoint, I think we've got some exciting things going on. Um, a lot of support we've heard from other people, so if we can continue that uh, sort of excited feeling in the community, th this is one thing that would, would gain support. Uh, you mentioned California. When I drive by there, it's kind of like, oh, okay. I've got all kinds of people moving in from different areas and they're looking at looking at schools. Um, this would this would help that. Um, I just wanted to throw this out there, give a shout out to Mark Hampton with his golf youth program. What would you say, maybe 50 kids or so were involved in that? Well, we had our uh, greens die off, right? So we had a group out of Chillicothe come in, receive those for a discounted price because we had a youth program set up. So kudos for him for doing that. But that kind of shows what we've got going on here. Um, so that would just, continue to implement um, our program um, and if you've got a good program you're going to have other people's come in that could be potential donors to our community and our school as well uh, one thing i did forget to add sorry I didn't put it up. Um, you know with our new high school coach there's a lot of enthusiasm for football again um, there's a lot of talent and in, in the high school team um, our junior high team just went undefeated. Their numbers have grown over the past few years. We have 61 kids out for youth football this year, which is the biggest number we've ever had. And I don't know how many years I've been doing it, but it's a lot. Um, we have two undefeated teams, one team that's getting on track, but we're, you know, we're getting there. So we have a lot of, there's a lot of potential there. And I think, um, I think those kids deserve a top-notch facility. I think we've also got some some people uh, my age that are maybe went out after college, different things, and they're moving back. So they're bringing those younger kids in too. Um, that's only going to help support our cause and everything we've got doing moving forward. So we've got some some younger blood, if you will, uh, just being supportive in the community. So if we show that hey, uh, we came together and we're kind of backing that up for everybody that's in this town, uh, I think you're going to get some more people that are going to stay. I think you're going to get some people that are going to continue to think it's, hey, let's move on back. Anybody else want to share a perspective? I mean, I had a question. I haven't seen the final architecture, but you're talking just the football field and the track. What about the concession stand and the bathroom area? Is there plans for that the reason being is is that I could only imagine if we sunk a million dollars everybody comes to see it and then they have to go use the restrooms in the ones that we have I think those things start coming out like as needs and if we can do it on a budget we do like we fixed the playground right we did that uh, that's a lease purchase it's already paid for you have an opportunity you have an opportunity where that says that you could actually if you did remove the bathrooms that you have right now you could actually build a new building on top of that something that would be a new concession stand new bathrooms a place for a weight room and a locker room you could actually have a training facility there that could actually accommodate all the sports. A place. Okay, you're going to go from 2.5 to 3.5 real fast. I mean, you're going to have a wish list, Joe. We can have a wish list as a community, but you know, it's kind of like remodeling a house. Where do you stop? We just built a, a Butler building type of building for the city over there at the TRA field. It was $60,000. That's finished there. What you're I not, think, you're not, oh, sorry. I mean, that's just something, if that you all are considering making an improvements to there, it would be something to think about. 
this is supposedly in the planning stages. It's rough, and we have right now, you have our weight room that we have there at the school. People, I see them standing outside in the wintertime doing cleans. So if we're talking about athletics, that is a strength training, that is an injury prevention mechanism. I would think that that would be something that would be something to be considered. So what I think would be best is if instead of asking for a bond to just rebuild and not show in the community exactly what will be done. So to show us what the plan is before we agree to borrow more money against ourselves. Does that make any sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why the architect's sitting here now, so we're gonna hear these kind of things. Well, I, I apologize, I got here a little late. What is the proposed cost of what you're saying about the plan? Chris. Right on the spot. Uh, the track and, and the field we've estimated at two million. And, and have we, are we dead set on a track and a field? Have we just looked at what a field would be? Or? We talked about it. Yeah. How much is the maintenance on the grass if we took care of it? Maintenance on the grass, I just ran that, it's somewhere around 20,000 a year. So that ain't very bad. Because you got water. You got, That's what you pay now? Yeah. I'd say on average since I've been here. So if we put like 10 grand into that, then we could probably afford the perk to seed it and just take care of the grass there. The, what, what grass, like if we had a turf field or? No, the, the grass that we already have. Uh -huh. So if we put 10 more thousand dollars onto fertilizing and actually taking care of that grass, it would look a lot healthier than it does. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be far less expensive than turf. Yeah, probably, what's the maintenance on turf? The, the maintenance on turf is not near what it is on, on grass. You, you want to speak to that, Chris, because well, I'm not very sure. Yeah, the routine is mainly a little bit of labor of respreading around the granules, maybe adding to some areas. It'll be 10 years down the road, maybe 12 at most, where you'll have to replace the, the turf part of the system, not the whole crux profile of the drainage system, everything that's under it, but the actual carpet, so to speak, is wear out with time. Dr. Rob. Yep. And for my research from other towns, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the cost to replace the field now, after it's installed, is about three hundred thousand. Yeah, we've, we've estimated the, the carpet size. It's what it'll be in ten years or so. It's hard to get a thing on right now, but it's a, it's a good. Commitment. And we're spending approximately twenty to twenty-five a year just maintaining what we have now. So basically, what we're spending, you can easily extrapolate that out. That yeah we put the money back what we didn't spend out of our budget. Right. So to me, the initial cost is going to come from doing the work and getting it in. And then after that, it's going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be a push after that because obviously that cost could go up with the economy the way it is, but the cost to maintain it's going to go up just as much. I mean, if not more. I think so. a fallback position, I'm going to ask Chris this, you know, if we, let's say, let's, let's forecast 10 or 12 years into the future here, because I think I get this question a lot. You know, what if the community can't afford the carpet? Is the turf a lot less? I, I think it is. You could probably use that same spot and pull up the turf and go to sod in there, I guess, if you wanted to. You could, you could probably return the mesh without too much trouble. You're gonna have a good drainage system under it. Yeah. I think big, the big advantage on the turf is that the community needs the additional usage of the field because there will be times, as, as was talked about, you could do baseball practice on it um, at certain times of the year where you probably couldn't do that on a, a natural turf field. So I think for the community getting behind that extra spend will be, do you have that demand for more use on the facility? I mean, you know, you get two, three inches of rain, you know, one morning, an hour after it's done raining, you're using the field again. You're not using the football field right now with natural turf for a couple of days, unless you're gonna do damage to it. So those are, the, I think, the, the trigger point of going to an artificial situation versus natural. And so if your community doesn't need the additional space, you don't need band to be on it, you don't need baseball to be on it, you, know, you don't need the, the TV side of it, all those sort of things, and all you really need is grass for football season, then status quo might ring out. So 
but you guys have to answer that as a district. Can I just look at the, the, the turf? We do have in the field now, which is at the playground. How much that gets used, and how much cleaner it made our building too. How much kids love. Uh, I mean, I've never seen kids go excited, get so excited at recess, but I certainly remember the mud hole that this board talked about that had been there over a decade that no one had repaired, and it was just you might as well have a fishing pond out there floating boats. You know, you get more use out of it. And you got TRA, we got the little kids. How you build a great football team? Well, you have good youth leagues. That, that's where it comes. It all feeds. So, yeah. <coughs> the uh, the playground just got locked down, which probably needed to happen by trash and stuff like that. I'd say it's gonna be hard to lock down the the stadium. So, do you know what the other schools do? I mean, is it open for? anybody to come on some whenever schools, they want? Yeah, some schools are open, some schools are not. We do have the cap capability, since we've got Wi-Fi access out there, and have a camera and post those signs. Um, we had some outdoor LED lighting that has gone to dust, so there's still some lighting there. It kind of detracts from people doing something crazy. I remember back in, when I was at Missouri State, and when somebody decided to get one of the, the I don't know what kind of machine it was, but it went out there and ripped up all this new car carpet that they had laid there. And uh, some guys got in a lot of trouble for doing that because they shouldn't have been doing that and they ripped it up millions of dollars of damage. But, you know, we would probably need to look at access and having the right security there. And uh, the reason the playground's locked down now is that we've, we've had several incidents there. So we need to kind of, we allow parents to use that. They just have to call the principal. Let them, let them know an adult's going to be there and they can use it still. I mean, some, After hours. some, tra some tracks, commercial tracks, they'll allow where you come into the school district and you pay like a five dollar and it gives you a card that you're able to access turnstiles yeah yeah well I, I just don't want to see the community and the district spend that much money and then have these messed up and i'm sure they get messed up because a group of us volunteered to pay to paint that field now and i'm assuming it was during the jv junior high football game we have a 25 dollar jig that i personally made to paint hash marks and some parents left their children unattended and they bumped it into the ground and it's ruined. So, I mean, I don't I don't want to see us spend this kind of money. Right. I, I'm not opposed to track, but I want track. I think track's awesome. I don't know why we want to spend the extra money just to have people in the community be able to walk around the track at night. Would and um, possibly carry you know, it's else more for a kid. <laughs> would um if we have a six wow. a six lane track, would we could I know we can't do like district or a conference meet, but we could. Yeah, we haven't heard back on it officially, but uh, you could actually. Your, Tipton could. Yeah, your duels or tri meets, or I think you can even do conference on six. I think it's recommended eight for districts, so there might be a level where you might not be able to do it. But I think a lot of that depends on your meet management. And I think if there's. A I mean, as far as from a city, a, a track meets do bring a lot of. I mean, they bring a ton of revenue into a town simply because of how many people will show up to those. I mean, you have whenever you bring that many schools, yeah. tracks actually uh, something that would help out the city. I like the, the turf field and other fact for spring baseball and softball because we struggle with practices because it rains so much. So everybody's like, well, "We'll try to use the turf field." Well, it's getting used, or you're in the gym. It's just hard to get practices and. For all levels of kids, I mean, we, we TRA, we have, you know, T-ball all the way to high school ball. There's nowhere to go. It rains. I mean, you're just you're done. So I think that's a huge advantage to be able to get out there in the spring and be able to use it more than just fall sports. And multiple teams to practice at the same time. Exactly, it'd be big enough to multiple teams practice. And Chris also brought up something with bases that are used. With the yeah, there's, there's bases that kind of have grips that can put down so you can do quite a bit of practice it's not as big as baseball fields so, you know doing all your your full length type stuff doesn't work but you know certainly a lot of your throwing your running your basics all those mechanics and things that in the spring you're trying to get the kids focused on makes a lot of sense so yeah there's a lot of opportunity there and dividing you know the facility's big enough dividing it into the two halves where you can run multiple you know youth leagues and and different other activities out there is pretty common we've got School districts that soccer practices on one half, football practices on the other half, full go at, at the same time and get their practices in when they you know, don't have those schedule things till eight, nine o'clock at night. And I know how tough it gets with communities that just keep growing and growing and needs sports and, and participation. 
I think it'd be wide enough to run run youth soccer on too in the spring sometimes too. It would be a huge advantage because right now it's rescheduling nightmare. You're right. Plus for everything. What would be the next, like, for example, if you, I mean, I know that it's the cost to actually put something on the ballot is probably minimal. How much is, how much, what would be your next step if you all decided, I mean, how much would that cost if you all, as a board said, hey, we're, we're going to put this on the, put this on the ballot and you've got a, what's, what's the next cost for that? What's the. Um, they start this after the election based on how many people participate in the election. Isn't that right, Leslie? Right. And I get a different bill every time. I want to say it's in the few thousand dollar range or something like that. There are legal things that we have to do. We have to get the legal language together. Uh -huh. So there's some lawyer fees that come into that, maybe a thousand. Um, Chris would have to start some plans because I hear out here like, and I saw from the survey that we put out, we had oh, about 170, let's see. A lot of people are wanting to know, hey, what are we voting for exactly, which I totally get it. We had 170 returns, that's faculty and staff, we put one on Facebook, and we also had uh, one that went to parents, and about 79% of those people were in favor of it, um, of improving that uh, sports complex. And, you know, the next step is we start engaging the uh, architect, sit down with Chris and say, hey, what do you think the fees are for this to get the plans drawn up right? Do you want to share what Southern Boone did? I like that that analogy of having good plans and why that's important. Some cost savings that come up. Sure. Um, so there's these types of facilities. There's pretty particular um, skill set and experience and tolerances for tracks and, and the levelness for the football facility and the drainage systems. So there's a couple of companies in in our area that that team up and put tracks and turf fields together. And so our sets of plans will, will follow along and, and allow those three companies, could be other companies that, that come into the area, other trades and stuff, um, to uh, competitively bid your facilities. We don't construct them. We just kind of try to get the, the pretty pictures down to the construction documents, the engineering documents, and, and get something out there for, for you guys to bid. And when you get that sort of you know, competitive bidding side of things, you, you're seeing significant savings in other community projects. And right now, as, as uh, Dr. Rao was talking about, we're working on it with Southern Boone I was already, I just said, I mean, I'm always kind of with Bob on that, that I'm a person that would say, you just let it up to them. If they say yes, then they say yes. If they say no, you move on and you tackle your next project. Right. The board would probably have to pass. But I didn't know if there, now if there was like some astronomical number, you said, well, you know, hey, it's, it's going to cost us $30,000 just to even put this on the ballot. And let's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with his fees, it'd be. <laughs> I won't say if he's going to marry her, not her. No. Hey, uh, Dr. Rowe, how, how long will it take? Let's say it passed. How long will it take for there to be this competitive bidding? Can we build, build that one or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, like with Southern Boone, they passed theirs in April. We've been working with our engineers over the summer and fall to put uh, the, the total track layout, the details together, all the scope of the work, working. We'll put it out to bid probably in uh, November, December of this year, and then the teams will that will bid on it will have everything ready to be open next summer. So, if you guys put the bond issue together, April twenty three, it'll probably be the summer of twenty four when the fronts of the work happens out there. All right, we're three or four months. If <laughs> <laughs> that's the case, twenty four is out for football. It would happen in the summer. Well, yeah. You're not going to get it done in a month. <laughs> no, you'll, you'll start it mid-May, and you'll have it done by mid-August. What are you seeing in price volatility there? That's something we track, and that's an issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, absolutely. Um, depending on how much room we have between what the bid is and, yeah. and the time uh, that, that it's going to take to get this down. Right. Uh, most of these products, they're petroleum-based. They have some petroleum added and stuff to them. And so, as uh, oil goes, these things go. Um, but uh, again, the, you know, we're getting numbers uh, uh, for turf and for uh, the, the track surfacing, you know, the low that's the asphalt base, um, all that stuff for, for Southern Boone and tracking with our numbers. And we use those numbers to kind of 
pass along to you guys is what we can see. Um, I think right now, overall construction industry wise, I think the pricing pressures are reducing a little bit. And for you guys, it's not HVAC units and it's, and it's not a lot of copper. So those are just some of the things, it's not a lot of lumber or steel. So the volatility of these components, I don't think is quite there as good as in a lot of commercial construction. Chris, you mentioned the asphalt base. And yeah. We know our tracks in terrible, kind of unrepairable condition. Is the asphalt base that we have is there any of that you can be utilized in? There? Uh, not effectively. It's not set up for 400 meter. So if you wanted a true yeah. 400 meter track, uh, the footprint's a little bigger. Yeah. You said it's junk, right? I mean, the track can't be. Yeah, I haven't evaluated it myself, but I, I think I the they said it can't from, seal no more. Right? I can't seal. That's it. what it. Yeah, so, it's, it's done its life. I'd be damned if I want to dump a million dollars on top of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't walk so, on now. I tarnish it on my desk. Yeah, place. true. No, and the drainage under asphalt is one of our key things in this area with our freeze thaw and how much you know we run through the four seasons here. So getting a good drainage base under it, getting good drainage around it, so water is not sitting you know, next to it. But that'll be what we set up because you know the quality of the asphalt oval will set how long your synthetic you know, surface lasts and how well it. So you're demoing the existing track. Yeah, each track. Track. Well, and, yeah, and that's part of the cost. Right, and, 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 and the right cost. but it's an existing cost, right, to <coughs> demo it. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, and it's all for right. free. No, it's all for our number. And, and to get the drainage profile, you can take close to 24 inches of your soil profile out. So there's a, there's a lot of earth moving out there. On the set of the track, I guess you're going to have way longer. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it'd be any longer than normal. You know, it'll be close to an equidistant track, so you have about 100 meters on your straight, 100 on your curves. We don't have the the width north and south uh, between your light poles and some of your right of way and your stands to be more, you know, of a, a wider track that allows a bigger soccer field. You pretty much got a football field that fits in the grass. construction cost. Um, I write construction bonds and I will agree with what he said. I've seen a lot of leveling off of the RFPs that I'm getting in for larger construction products projects. I think the supply issues are easing a little bit. Um, you know obviously you, you can't forecast that to a depth but just a trend I've trend I've seen from 2020 to, you know, I just recently wrote a bond for a $26 million project. Um, and, you know, the, the contractor is very confident that um, his pricing will, you know, it's not gonna start for three months, but he's, you know, obviously there's gonna be some increase, but it's all within the uh, tolerance level that bonding companies look for. So, you know, just to kind of echo his statement, I think we've maybe plateaued a little bit from, from 2020, but those were concerned about oil. Right? Yeah, yes, and you know that's. It's just asphalt. They'll have a synthetic uh, system on the top of it, so it'll be a probably a close to 10, 12 mil profile of SCR and probably a poured urethane with EPD on it in that area. Nice quality. So the bond would absolutely cover it. Is there? We don't know until it gets bid, but right now what Chris is seeing is within our reach. Within our reach. Oh, what are we gonna? What are we taking a bid on? Just the field and the track, or the, like the site plans around it too? Chris would write those uh, the RFP for us, basically, which are the specifications for what we're looking for. And if you were on a steering committee, you'd say what you wanted to see, what color you wanted to be, you know. No, I just mean like the drainage and stuff for the field, the site plans. Yeah, like where the water's gonna run off. Yeah, all yeah. Be, all that would be part of it. Yeah, yeah. If the project goes over budget, is gonna cover that. If it goes over the two point six, we won't be able to do it if it goes over budget. Yeah, I think we get the 
bids in and if they were that way we'd have to talk about some value engineering ideas if we feel real hard pressure if the budget's real tight you know there's a step down of the quality for the trash service that we can do that, that could be as much as a hundred thousand less than the other surface we could look at bidding the whole thing for something like that so we have pricing just in case so we can keep the, the base of the project you know as, as secure as possible you know you, you could if you really get the pressures you know just leave it get the asphalt in and maybe the surface comes in a year or two after that as a possibility so there's opportunities there I mean, at some point in time, someone put in a basketball court in an elementary school that we can't use. And I don't want to sit here 20 years from now thinking that we made the same kind of call. Well, that's what would have to be done to make it a state right. I mean, it's really possible. It's reasonable. You probably have to move the stands. And the sad part is you don't have to move them very far. You know, probably 30 feet or something. That was kind of my, my thought. Yeah. That's a small footprint. Is it, is it going to be crammed in there and look or look funny? I'm not sure. I'd use the term funny. It's pretty standard. Um, I, I think it fits. Um, I wouldn't consider moving it. Research I did on this, I believe, is a Columbia Hickman has a six-lane track. <laughs> they do have a six-lane oval. Okay. They have an eight-lane straight. Right. Yeah, six -lane oval. So, I mean, we're. I think we. I don't think we need to trip up on can we host districts. A six-lane track. You. And I've checked Mish's guidelines. It does not say you cannot hold districts on a six-lane track. They would probably never award. It, but <coughs> let's let's be honest. I don't think we're trying to get district track. I think we need to benefit our track. If we're going to have a track program, we should give the track team the ability to compete on the same level with other schools. Mm -hmm. And a six lane track that's regulation gives our kids, I mean, look at me, I'm not a track person. So, <laughs> okay. so I mean, for me to defend track is, but what I'm saying, it's, it's just like any other sport you have. You need to give your kids the best opportunity to compete 
after that sport. Well, I, yeah. I agree with that to an extent, but up until last year, wrestling team was practicing in the locker room. But I think we've made steps to improve that. Well, we have. Okay, and this would be a step to improve the track program. I, I, I'm just saying. You know, I, I, I think if you look at, if, you're, if, if we want to do this for the betterment of the community, we should look at it. I don't think you want to piecemeal it. And the elementary gym is a brilliant example. Um, and that was obviously not in this board, you know, that just something that happened. But when you piecemeal it, you might have a harder time getting support for that. Um, and I don't know the savings of not doing a track and trying to do one later would benefit the district that much in my opinion. But, you know, I, I think if, if we're gonna do it for the betterment of our kids, we need to do what's to the benefit of the major of the most kids possible. I'm in support of this whole complex, but we're bringing people in and we still have the same concession stand and bathroom facility. Are those, can those accommodate what we're wanting to bring in with the new complex? I mean, that, 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 that's the same, I mean, because I'm telling you, that'll be the first thing, that'd be the first thing that I said. That's why whenever, I mean, I travel around and every gas station, that, that, that's what you think, what, that's what they advertise. We've got the cleanest restrooms. The reason being is because that's where you go and it gives you the taint of what the whole place feels like. And it is embarrassing. I mean, when you talk about, you know, if somebody around town, if they want to leave their yard the way they leave it, you know, that ultimately that's a reflection on them. But when you talk about public property, like school property, or what you say is at the city at the park, that's a reflection upon every person that lives here. When somebody walks into our restroom there at the football field, is that reflective of any person here that I know? I, I don't think it's reflective of any of us. I think we did have a pretty good project in TRA field for minimum cost, and it looks really nice. So I think there is options. Maybe we could. You know, budget, fundraise, I don't know. Five, six schools here with the many kids you're going to have. And parents, you know, facilities, bathroom facilities going to be a little bit of a problem. You know, you got two schools here during football game. It's, there's a little bit of line, but it, it would be something to consider to see where it would put us at a budget. Realistically speaking, if you have six schools here, including Tipton, where are you going to park everybody? Mm -hmm. park I, them too. I, 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 I'm not against track either. either. I think track's fine. I'm just spitballing it out there. If you have a six meet or sixteen track meets, park them up, park them up there at the Morlock property, up in the grass. <coughs> I'm not aware. Up in the grass. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't take my son on the track last year at Smithton. I guarantee we have as much parking together in Smithton as we have on the track. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have the hill, we have the Walnut property, we have the street, street parking. Street. Yeah, Smithton at six or seven. Pardon? Me? What size of track they got? I, you know, I just picked my son up, but I know. <laughs> good thing. I think the parents will figure out how to get their kids to the track meet if that's what they'll, they'll figure that out. <laughs> Any other comments from the group? Guys, I really, really, really appreciate the fact that you guys came out. I mean, it helps the board make the decisions, <clears throat> have uh, meaningful discussions. And I, I've never seen this board say, we're just gonna do what we want to, we don't care what the community says. They're, they're wanting to hear from you guys. And you know, anytime you guys wanna come to a meeting, please do. And you know, we've got a couple of seats that are gonna open up. You don't have to raise your hands the ones that are going off, but we always need your feedback. I'm the servant of this board and this community. This is not Dr. Rob's project, it's a community's project. I live here with you. I pay the same taxes. I'm just still asking the questions. It's what the community wants to do. So um, just wrapping it all up. Any comments from any of the board members or anything you guys heard, anything you want to add? I do have a question on how the bomb is actually currently working. So I've read a little bit like so much money per so much property tax. 
And so I'm curious to what that is, and then when does the bond actually run out? Because I think everybody's- 2042. When is it? 2042. Okay, so there's a big misconception is, oh, if this is going to pass, everybody's going to get more money. No. So I think people, I mean, they think they they think that. So I think yeah. we need to yeah. tell them that you're not going to get, you're not going to pay less taxes, guys. It's going to go out longer. It's going to go out longer. So, I don't know. It's like you're proposing totally a no, no tax increase at all, correct? I mean, it's not. Uh, it won't be an increase, it'll just be longer. It's just, you're extending it. Yeah. You're extending it. So I have a question. So the, the current bond goes through 2042 if we do nothing. What our obligation is on. Our current bond will go through 2042. Okay, so if we. At some point, we start to make money. If we really push it, we might be able to pay off our current bond five years early. That's what the research is. I talked to our financial guy earlier. He said you might be able to pay off about five years early. But based on what we're bringing in and with a 1% increase to assess valuation, and what we're bringing in as a community and what, what growth has looked like, it's been pretty flat. It was one to three percent is what we've seen. A dollar eight of your 401 that you pay for your tax levy, that's our tax levy, a dollar eight of that is paying for these projects that we've got, the Ag Center, the roofs, the HVAC, the security, things that the district can't afford. That's what that dollar eight pays for. We can't afford this. What do you got here on the board? We can't afford it. But the community can if they decide to maintain that dollar eight and say, you know what, this is a project we want to see the district do. So if you maintain it, okay, we're going to be paying on this till 2042, but as we're paying it, it starts to ebb down, okay, because we start to pay it off again. We say, okay, what's the next thing that needs to be addressed? All of our needs have been addressed. The roofs are in good shape. Probably looking at close to 10 years on them. I've had them assessed twice. This was one of the ones on the roof with me looking them over. Um, We've taken care of the HVAC. That's another 20 years, roughly. Um, we got good security. The windows have been replaced. We got tenting on the windows, even. We got some security features on those windows so they can't be busted out. We got deadbolt locks in every classroom. We've got all the Wi Fi that's running. We've got Cat 6E cable that runs through everything. We got Wi Fi hubs, which we can do on a budget. Those are going to come up in March, and I've already budgeted for them for money that we have. And we got E rate and other grants to claim. So I'm not seeing any huge big piece that we need to deal with within the next eight to 10 years. But by the time we get there, guys, we've, we've paid it down again, see? So maybe we need to fix a half million dollars of roofs. Well, half million dollar roof fix, we probably can't afford that. We might do a bond issue. It won't be me, it probably won't be these people sitting here unless they decide to stay a long time. But there are always maintenance issues to do to a school district when you're not rich. If you're not Ladue or something, okay, you're not, you know, this is how school districts all over the state take care of stuff or build nice stuff for kids. This is what they do. So I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, I mean, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I just try to make it simple. <laughs> it's like, it's gotta be simple for me, too. <laughs> let's be honest. You can do a lot of reading on this. What's that? <laughs> People think they're like getting a, a tax break. No. <laughs> I think for capital improvements, we've got to run through that bond issues because we don't collect enough in taxes outside of those. So if we were never to pass a bond issue, at some point in time, it's not like the taxes go away. I think, at least the way I understand it, I think taxes could likely go up because, I mean, obviously the needs don't ever go away. I mean, we've got to have a roof. And, I, you know, you look at last year, we have to have an HVAC system. And in the, today's world, we have to have security. And when you look about you look at liability, all that stuff to go along with that. So those are basic needs that have to be met that we couldn't meet without, without outside of the bonding, outside of the bonding capital. And this particular project is the bigger, what you guys were talking about and I heard a lot of, the bigger vision of where's Tipton going? Are we just gonna kind of let it just kind of limp along? Or are we gonna build something that attracts some people here? Good families, I'll give you a couple of examples. Look at Dexter, I'll send a, a link out or I'll probably put it on Facebook, take a look at what they've done with their school district. They got about 2,400 kids. Their campus looks a lot like ours. They've been passing bond issues to fix things and make it nice and have a turf field and have nice classroom space and a, and a, a theater and all kinds of stuff. And they don't look much bigger than we do. We do. Down in Southwest East Missouri. And you know, I, 
I guess I just want to say I'm asking the question because I love chip tips. I've loved it since I've come here, and, and I'm not going anywhere. So if you guys want to see something good happen, this board will do it with you. I'll do it with you. But here's here's the call. Okay, you guys sitting here. We need 650 votes roughly to say yes to pass this thing. Look around. There's about 22 people that walked in the room. We need about 650 people to say yes. We want to do this for our kids, or it just falls flat again. How many votes did you get? Did we get last time on? Uh, it take, I looked it back through the last few. It takes about 650 to get 50, about 60 percent of what you're looking at. That, that's the round number. I don't have it right here in my head. But I looked and said, curious, how many would give me a little bit of room to get about 60 percent? That's what you need. <coughs> you had a question over here. I'm just thinking about the, if you have the the bottom cover the state of the, the field and the track. Um, have you looked at or considered other ways to get funds to, for the additional projects? We did. So, um, you know, I work for a company that, that they take or they're out on the street, beating the street for donations. So, you know, you have buildings named after people, stadiums named after people. Um, is that an option to um, get out there and find someone who, you know, who knows? They I'm wanna, sure the board would accept any donation. Not what I'm getting at. <laughs> but it we, happens. We, we it don't happens have a full time day. grant person that goes out and solicit those. No. We don't. So. We get a lot to cross our path that we go get a bucket and dip our, our share out of, but uh, not someone that full time does that. But there is a big donor in, in town. There's a few famous people I've tipped and I was looking on Wikipedia last night. <laughs> I'm sure the board would consider you know, a certain level of donation that the people might be named. I don't know. Would that be a big number for this? At any rate, thank you guys. Any other comments from the board? Thank you all for participating and we're going to continue on with our meeting. We appreciate it. All right, sorry, Chris, do you have anything else you want to say? No, I'll, no. Leave, I'll leave this. Yep. That way, if you okay, for a round, we're up to the budget summary to you guys. Um, I think it ended up being about nine pages long. It's probably longer than you wanted to read, but I tried to give you everything that you might want to know. Um, that's just our money coming in, several pages. Short version, we're budgeted for an approximately 40% fund balance uh, for the school year. I'm um, hoping to end right at that amount at the end of the school year. So by, right about where we are at the end of this year, because of a lot of federal money coming in, we're going to be at about in the same spot. Push the button on the right. Oh. And um, it will be very interesting how the state decides to handle the 38K increase to teachers. Um, we need a stable flow of funds coming from the state to maintain that and a commitment from the state. Uh, not a year to year band aid that is approved on June 29th right just prior to our fiscal year um, that may or may not be approved or signed by the governor just came from a meeting at the West Central Superintendents Association meeting today and there's some conversations happening at the state they formed a blue ribbon commission of a, a mix of educators and business people um, that they are advocating or at least hinting or strongly suggesting um, a recommendation that the 38k base salary becomes law so basically a school district would have to pay that. They're required to by law, statutory requirement. Right now the statutory requirement is 25K. And it's been around for, well, at least a decade or more, I think. Um, but they're also saying the second part, all the legislators going, oh yeah, we're gonna vote for that. And they're saying, but, but fully funded. That's the second part, that's the catch. So you might hear a lot of legislators, yes, I fully support a 38K base salary for teachers and then go off and do their thing and not
not think about, hey, it's act it actually has to be in the budget. Somehow, some way, that money has to come in. And right now, they've had the special session up at the General Assembly, and all they're talking about is what? Tax cuts. <laughs> so find out about how many different ways they can ta cut taxes, which is probably not one, what you want to do if you're going to add a big budget line item like that. So um, hopefully our legislators don't miss that part. Um, the only way our district could hope to do something like that would be to ask uh, if the state leaves us hanging, the, you know, holding the bag and saying, hey, you're just going to have to do it. Well, we'd have to ask for a local levy increase. We have to say, hey, um, we can't pay teachers, and we need to pass it by a simple majority. Or we have to do massive cuts to be able to do it. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars more in our budget to do that. Um, okay, so that's, that's the bad side. Uh, we will have some small projects that I budgeted for. Um, we've got our Wi-Fi that will be in. 60 hotspots that we're going to have to replace that, that RFP. I'm working on that um, with Brian Keel from Midwest. We're going to push that out and see who bites on that one. Um, those are all going off. What, what do they call that, Clint? Subscription? <laughs> they sell everything on subscription. Yeah, everything now. subscription. Yeah, so it's like a Chromebook. It goes out four or five years. You know, now they the Wi-Fi hubs that are up there and the ceiling go out. Google Chrome is free, right? Yeah. For now. The graduate, I'm talking to Ms. Metter about a graduation stage. Um, I've gotten some feedback from all you guys. Hey, let's make that look a little nicer. We'll probably use it for other things too. Waiting um, for my last bid to come in. She is hunt, hunting them down for us. Because I said, Ms. Metter, what do you want? I don't want you to do Dr. Rock's bid. I want you and Coach Culpepper and maybe some of the teachers work together and figure that out. And make it look nice. And Dr. Rock will say, this is what I think. And the board will say, we like it too. <laughs> so there you go. Um, teacher computers, we're going to replace about 10 of those. Uh, we're starting to cycle some of those out. They're getting a little old. Um, then we have our water mitigation project. Um, I've got the um, bid that uh, um, Union Construction gave me, and we're not quite, I, I think, based on the amount that he's proposing, which was, I'm not going to say it publicly, but he was working through GRP, and then finally just told GRP, I'm done dealing with you guys. And, We'll deal with it, so we'll put a bid out to see what kind of, uh, in my mind, let's let other people look at it and give us an idea of what would mitigate that water effectively. Uh, I think Moon can do it. I think a lot of people could probably do it. But we also have good, two good construction guys on our board that um, could give us a look at it too and tell us what they think. So I think that's important to hear everybody's voice at the table on how much we want to plunk into that, that, that uh, mitigation strategy. Um, Might have to give some new cafeteria trays. I just found out about today, so I don't know what those are going to cost. <coughs> so we're running out of trays. They're kind of breaking down. So that's what they told me today. So those are some side projects that are coming up. Um, any questions on maybe what you read or what I provided you guys? Anything else you'd like to know, or maybe I don't know but I can dig for? Or you send me an email, or you can ask me now. So I do have a question. Sure. What are we, what are we saving that white fence so the project maintenance show? Saber is supposed to start hacking that off and <coughs> re-put it back in. I had to get an auger for the uh, for the tractor, which he just recently started using, put that fence around the, uh, the football field instead of the PVC pipe with the, with the, with the iron. And so he put all those in first, and he's going to go start working on that, too, and put it back. And so he's sitting up there looking at it. It's going back. But he has to be able to dig those holes. So he's, we plussed up the tractor a little bit so it could do some more with some attachments. So we don't have to pay somebody to do everything all the time. Hey, Sabre. <coughs> so I got. Okay. That's my report, administrators. Sure. Yes, on my 
going to like to share um, our academic intervention. If you looked at that part, I tried to highlight it in there for you. Um, we, from this time last year to now, if you do that comparison, um, we have decreased the number of students who are on that F list um, by 56% in the middle school and by 75, actually 76, because I ran the numbers right before I came over here again, in the high school. Um, just, I gave you all some statistical numbers in there for you to see them. So when I ran it, it wasn't five sheets, it was one front and back, and I think I did the happy Number dance kids. in the office. So <laughs> very, very pleased with that. Um, the other piece is um, Jenny Clutter um, came in and donated some items for our middle school that were had to do with hygiene. So that was real nice. We appreciated that. Uh, and then the uh, group that's in uh, the Project Accelerus class, they're working on a project to put coats in the community. Um, and so they were my team that went out and took care of the hygiene. It was four young men and, or three young men and they took care of giving out the hygiene products to the, the boys and there was a female in there that she gave those out to the girls and it's really nice of them to donate that and said she would continue to bring things back to us. Um, morning tardies are way down. Nobody likes them in lunch detention. Um, so that's a good thing. And uh, I just think things are, you know, things are going real well and looking much like school used to. If I can just get them to go back to standing by their locker. <laughs> they don't they don't know how to do that because the freshman class came in and they did that for a little bit and then they didn't do that anymore so nobody stands in the hallways anymore like we all used to that's a little different I did include the school fight song in there for you guys to look at and the school song because the class of the 50-year class reunion 72 came in and they were looking for that and we looked through your books trying to find it and we finally found it and I thought it probably needs to be documented somewhere so we have it. Mm -hmm. but, so there it is. I don't have fun facts but I have did you know. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yes, I was glad to see that. Makes I wanted to tell you, uh, Leanne, do you remember years ago we looked at the junior high and there were 43 students of junior high getting FCDs. And that's only when it was a seven and eight. Yes, and, and we had worked and, worked and worked and worked <coughs> to eliminate that. And I think we can see that today, so thank you. I'm yeah. very pleased with Ms. Melton. She has been an immense addition to our school, immense. She, there's lots of things that she does during the school day that for the last three years we've been trying to do after the school day, and she's taken care of a lot of things during the day. Now I know we're still gonna have, we're getting to that point where we're still gonna have some after school interventions that have to be assigned. Ms. Thomas helps with that as well one day. Um, but really we're, we're all in the same same practices, same plan. I know you'll understand that, Patsy, where everybody's in the buildings doing the same thing, the same expectations, yeah, which is nice. Figures over the year what projects are going to look Yeah, we're very, very pleased. That's all I have, unless you have questions for me. Thank you. Well, I have our uh, Special Olympics football team is gonna be playing Friday at the Special Olympics Center in Jeff City. So if you wanna have fun, come on down. Nine to two. No, unified team. Our unified team. You wanna explain everyone what the unified team is? Um, it's awesome. It it's is, absolutely awesome. It is really good. Um, it is, um, we actually have a leisure skills class that is a class that, that high school age students sign up for for credit. And that class is, is half of the class is the students with special needs and the other part of the class is the, are the physical peers. And so they work together and they use the special Olympic curriculum for the sports uh, for what they're learning how to do and learning to practice. And they've got a football team. They're, they, uh, they're gonna be doing basketball we're actually gonna play, we got invited to play at Westminster on the court at Westminster at a, at a halftime game, so. Uh, but lots of exciting things along that line. And what happens with the, uh, the classes all together, they do activities all together, and at the very end of the class, they break up into two parts. And uh, Anna takes some of the students and works with them on 
disability awareness and, and you know, what did you see, what, do you, what questions do you have? And Mr. Cooper then works with the, the students over here and talks to them about, you know, what they got out of the, the class today, so. I think the phenomenal piece of it is when they do the, the awareness part uh, with the high school students of what they really have to say and to say about things is, is very eye-opening. They, their, their eyes are, it. they get it, they get it. And they really have become um, stronger leaders or better leaders. So are you going to Jeff City then? Oh, of course. <laughs> she can pump stuff, are you going? Well, she needs to be able to pump stuff out on Oh, oh I, send it to, I send it to Roxanne, and Roxanne gets my stuff out. So yeah. we'll have pictures. Yeah. 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 Just let so. me know she's doing that. That's a good idea to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I'll be at work, but now that I know what's going on, it's like all right, I'll check it every while. Oh yeah, we'll have we'll have cool. pictures. Yeah. So one of the other things Facebook, Twitter. is the mentoring no, that Facebook. you're that you get the kids with. You've got some kids, some high school kids that are mentoring. Right now, there's no scheduled events at Tipton, correct? But that's a goal? That is something that we are gonna to work towards doing, yes. So. I think that would be great. Tina, I hear you. Okay, moving on here, we got new business. New business. Um, we have Chris here tonight. He has done these preliminary drawings for us for free. Um, he did discuss um, what it would cost to get him started on plan. You guys want to discuss that or whether you want to do that now, later, or what your budget timeline would kind of look like. I know the community's come in here pretty strong tonight. You got some survey data there to look at. I think that's kind of your homework if you haven't read through that yet on how you feel about it. Um, I'm not here to force a bond issue. I'm not here to force a project. But if this board wants to see this on the ballot, I need to know because I think the sooner we get a lot of these details that we heard out in the audience kind of shored up and get a steering committee together and know what everybody wants and pump it out, April comes quick. And um, my concern is that if we wait too long, um, a lot of questions will remain unanswered because the architect isn't engaged other than that picture over there on the wall. And a lot of even the people that support us not having their questions answered. So he told me approximately ten thousand dollars to get the plans done for this, and I'd have to dig with him a little bit to make sure that's a solid price. Um, he is our district architect. If you guys don't want to do that, then just tell me. Say it's not feeling it, but it's a big decision. <coughs> I mean, is there a reason we can't wait? We can wait. My only concern is we got a lot of questions out here in the audience about what it's going to look like, where it's going to be, how, what part of the hill is going to get cut out, uh, you know, what's going to look like when it's ready. Well, I mean, they can wait. I mean, they can wait. What what changes have been? I mean, what's changed since he originally did it? He's never written and done that. We've drawn some concepts out. Not that. Uh, that's sure. actually DRT in their their subsidiaries. I got that from them for free. But I mean, yes, they're. I mean, I mean, the community is going to have a lot of questions. I mean, we're going to have questions. So I don't know. I would just hate to spend that kind of money. I mean, if, if you don't even know the bond's going to pass, then you're out ten grand. Yes, you still have the plans. The way in the safe. I get it. But in reality, what are you going to do with it? I think it's going to be really hard for us to know whether or not the bond, the bond's going to pass. I, I just, I mean, I was certain the bond was going to pass a couple times before it did. I don't think it will pass. Um, I, I just, I, I think for us, what we have to decide is, is do we want to run it? And if, we're, if we want to run it, we're going to have to spend the money to get the plans. 
we're going to have to fully bond as much money as we can because uh, I don't think 2.5 million gets it. Well, I mean, the question I have is, you can bond us if that's what you if that's your end goal, but you're not going to address the lighting. You mean the football, just, the football field lighting? I mean, if you're going to put in a nice field and track like that, why would you not switch your lighting over to LED? We just have to see what the budget would actually let us do. I think uh, Matt and Leo told me we could get probably up to 2.5 by the time we actually did the bonds. If and he works. just said 2.5 and was leaving stuff out. So if you get 2.5, you're not going to be able to do everything you want to do. I mean, you just well tell them right now it's a field and a track, maybe. No, no concession stand, no lights. Restroom. The restroom staying the same. I mean, you can probably say that without plans. I, I think that you would have to say this is uh, this is our these are what we're this is what we're going to do, and if somehow these three end point we can get other things done, then we would consider those as secondary items. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if it's secondary, I, I don't. My concern is. Oil production is getting ready to go down. They're pulling back. Yeah. Um, and so oil is going to come back up. Mm -hmm. It's already um, climbing. But who knows by the time that gets that done, what I mean, some of that's going to depend on what happens with Burned the rest of the reserves. But <clears throat> I, I think that's one thing that folks don't completely understand. You know, you pass something for a certain amount but then there's you know it's a year and a half before you can start doing it or a year yeah. and things change and you just can't now, now you're in trouble because you have you don't have the money to do exactly what you want to do, do I mean that's what we dealt with in this project I think it just I, I would like to I would like to pursue it I think at least have the information but my concern is it's so tight on between what it's going to cost and what we can bond. That's the only concern that I have. Mm -hmm. Is that we end up running up against that the price issue. Well, I know when we re got it, California and recabled it all, they passed that bond this year. And I think at that time, their facility was $3 million. How many years ago was that? Yeah, it was Tiffany Yusuke when my kids were. Yeah, that's what I was. So when he says 2.5 million, I'm thinking 4.5. To do, I mean, if you're talking any, you, you might get a track and a field, but no, nothing else. Which, I mean, that's kind of what he was saying there. He wasn't saying lights. He wasn't saying new concession. Yeah, I was wondering how he gets his bids. I mean, obviously, there's all <clears throat> types of software you can use, but there's probably only a handful of people that actually do this work. And it's all going to be filled, to, I think, or partial supply and demand then at the time that you know, people are ready to actually get the stuff done. Right. Here's what I would do. MSBA is in... November, it's a month away. There's going to be at least one, probably two or three tarp companies there. Yeah, I would just point blank walk up to them and say, we did, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I've asked them that question, oh, yeah. and they're going to tell you, oh, yeah. you're looking at at least $3 million. Yeah. So, regardless of him drawing up a $10,000 plan, if they tell you it's $3 million and you can only bond 2.5, like Craig said, don't matter how fancy your plan is, you know, that's my take on it. I think if we're able to get good information, a ballpark like that, it seems we're, we're close enough to that meeting. If we're able to get it from them, then it makes sense to ask that question. Now, if you walk out there and they say, I have no idea, then maybe we're back to $10,000. Well, sometimes what they do is I tell them, hey, we want to build this, come down and look at our site. 
give me a give me an estimate. Is that, that what you think? Is that maybe the way to go? Yeah. I mean, yeah. just because it'd be now, he, more now Chris has four or five companies that he's working with regularly. That's what he told me. Mm -hmm. Those four or five companies, he's got they're, they're all competitive with each other. So his read on it, that's about what it's going to cost him based on the cost he's seeing mm -hmm. now. Because he's currently finishing up a project at Southern Building. Now they're putting a lot of double doors in one there, so it's going to be not two and a half million. Because they can. What's that? Because it looks like it can. Yeah. I mean, everything that they've done there yeah. in the last two years. Yeah, but part of it needs, part of it is about what kind of bells and whistles they're actually putting on. I mean, if some of those bells and whistles are required, or are, are need, to be there to make it look like it's worth it, then that becomes a problem. I mean, if it's just, I, 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 I would think that we're not quoting this amount thinking it's just like a economy scale type version of what this would, or economy, economy version of what this would look like. But I mean, if we're gonna spend that much money, you want it to look good. Mm -hmm. I think we're two million short. With 2.5, I'm just, that's a hunch. Versus what you're going to get for what the community expects. I mean, yeah, I would love to see it, but I mean, so just like you said, yeah. you can put in the track and the field, but you can't address the bathrooms, you can't address concession stand and you can't address weight room. room slash locker room whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. so then there you are I mean Jason brought up a point at the end and no we don't have a full-time grant writer there are like we're attending the Warrensburg School Foundation so now you have the school foundation if you had enough community people that wanted a foundation that raised money I mean, they went to us, we gave them $3,500 for the foundation auction. And that goes right into classrooms. I don't know how a foundation gets created, but I mean, obviously you're not gonna run around town to people you think might have money and say, can you give us a hundred grand? Right. That, it doesn't work like mm -hmm. that. It's a foundation with auctions and a lot of, mechanisms making it work right it's a big deal a lot of big businesses that's involved and i mean springfield <clears throat> a foundation they wrote us a check for 100 grand one time didn't even want it yeah we but don't have that amount of business yeah. now we do have some businesses that you know but we're not going to have a do you have to remember a lot of like our that. vocational groups a lot of our clubs a lot of teams are actively <coughs> soliciting funds on a regular basis and make pretty good money. Yeah. It would be worth, I kind of our foundation is kind of running through all the activities that we have. If, if there is some sort of mechanism or something that some schools are doing to put that in place so that people can donate, it'd be worth exploring some. I mean, like my hometown, mm -hmm. their football field was paid by their boosters. Yeah. The turf by the boosters. California has a great alumni association that buys things for the school. Yeah, and significant things. I just wonder, I mean, I, I get that we, we solicit businesses, but I wonder if, you know, the idea of like if someone maybe would be willing to give money but doesn't really know how to do that, or if, if there was some sort of way for them to, to do that easier, if that would, and Maybe. they don't want to be known that some people don't want you to know that they gave 10, 20,000. The foundation allows that to happen. And, you know, Sedalia School Foundation, I mean, it's huge. It's thousands of dollars it generates. But I'm not, not that we can do that, but it might be something to work towards. And I'm not opposed to naming things. It could be like Clint Miller, yeah. Mid's <laughs> Restroom. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. A large portion of California is just paid for by a family. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, it was, I can't think of his name, but they named it after him. No, it wasn't his no, last. It was, it was before. Yeah, right. Before that. Yeah. And then they tried to change the name. Mark Hampton was the thing to try to change the name to Lasher, but it didn't go over. I mean, the but idea of naming changes. stuff is, is seems like a good one. It's done all the time. I remember when hmm. Bill Laurie had Paige's name on the Mizzou Sports Complex before she got busted for plagiarism at UCLA. So. <laughs> One of the issues happens is that person gives a lot at one time, mm -hmm. and then they move on, they die, whatever, and then 50 years later, you're like, why is it still called that? They had a lot of spots. Because like a you sure. know person, 20 other people have given 10 times that by now. Yeah. I so think that maybe there's the foundation some protects that. I think. Yeah, or you could. I mean, that would be a conversation. <clears throat> I think with whoever's donating money, you know, what do you want? What do you foresee this to be in the future? And after so many years, what, how would you feel about us moving this or keeping yeah. it around? And, I don't know. and it's a board, you know, you have a board for that. And it's not just, well, Dr. Rob was like, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people there. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're separate. Yeah. It's, you know, now we're adding another name or whatever. I don't, that's big picture thinking. So what do we need to, we need to talk, I mean. We have a discussion if there's no motion on, want to move yeah. on it, we just move on and move on, yes. Any motions on that, that you want to do? I would be in favor of paying the money to have him draw a plan. Is that a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to do that, we can vote on that. Um, I understand, I, I, I have some real concerns about us being able to pull it off. It seems like there's enough support to um, do some due diligence. So we've got a motion by both. Do we have a second? Second by Stephanie. All in favor? One, two, three. Passes four, two. And I was a no, and Clint was a no. Yep, that's right. Moving on. Okay. Amended budget. Uh, I've kind of given you that budget message. amended budget is a big spreadsheet that you have there something that will make your eyes bug out it made mine bug out the last few months as I plugged all our people in and our expected expenses um, visiting with our administrators on their needs and features um, I just recommend that uh, we go ahead and uh, accept a motion to approve our amended budget for fiscal year 2023 I'll move to approve the budget. Motion by Clint. Second. Second by Miss Reed. All in favor? 6 0. Oh. All right. Boza. Make a motion to move the executive session pursuant to 610029 to discuss plan three. Perfect. Do you need anyone? Oh, can you? Dr. Rob. Um, Probably not. No. So a motion by Bo. Second. Seconded by Miss Reed. Bo. Yes. Miss Reed. Yes. Ashley. Yes. Clint. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Myself. Yes. Six up. Oh, wow.